Peace, peace. Get started in a moment. Yeah, yeah, we back once again. We're gonna be going in on some information that you might need to have. You know, it's gonna be dealing with the brain, of course, the crystal city, and the book of revelations all right and we're going to show you how all this breaks down because you know a lot of people been you know too busy paying attention to um what the jehovah witnesses you know have put on the cover of their books where they show you a gigantic city made of crystal and gold and so forth coming down at the sky with god or jesus sitting in the center on his throne well, we're going to show you where all this really originated from, how it's allegorical. It's allegorical. That's just what it is. All right? So um, just hang on and um, hold tight as we get you into that information. But I'm going to be going into um, the deepness of it. You know, I have no choice to go into the deepness. That's just what it is. You know, the deepness. <laughs> all right? So... Um, just hold on tight. We're going to get to you in a second with it. I'm going to have to um, bring up my screen. All right, I'm going to have to bring up my screen. So um, just bear with me for a second here. All right. All right, hopefully you get a chance to see this right quick. All right. Let's see. Um. All right. Right, these are, this is a new um, screen slide presentation. A couple of slides I showed you last night, but I had to in order to get you in today's information. All right, so basically what scientists have found out is that the greatest discovery of our generation is that the human beings can alter their lives by altering their attitudes of mind. As you think, so shall you be. Right, this is William James. All right, so um, check that out. This is the law of attraction. I've gone over this um, years ago. Y'all might have seen the video that I did with Brother Rich. Um, shoot, which I did right after the secret came out, and I was was called the secret of secrets, the law of attraction. All right. Um, so if y'all haven't seen it, go and check that out. Uh, make sure y'all support the um, YouTube. Make sure y'all subscribe. Most important thing, you know, um, we want to get the subscriber list up to um, over a hundred thousand. So y'all helping us with that. All right. So let's look at the triune brain. All right, because they always tell you that there's only one brain, but actually there's four brains, three up top one in your center which is actually your abdomen with the peak at the solar plexus all right in which that is known as your instincts your intuition comes from up top but your 
instincts come from down bottom. Same place where you're nervous, you have to do a speech, and you're in front of someone or a group of people, and you have to explain certain things, and all of a sudden you start feeling butterflies in your stomach. Those butterflies are the remnants of neurons. The scientists have found that you have neurons in your small and large intestines. All right, you also have crystal sand like particles that are located there. All right, as we spoke about that before. All right, um, so you have the reptilian brain, all right, which is called the archipelion, which is based on survival, fight or flight, fear. All right, you have the mammal brain, the paleopalion, um, which is the emotions, seeking pleasure, avoid pain, all right? And then you have the rational, which is the neopalium, which is logic and thinking, all right? Which correlate to the neocortex in the frontal lobe region of the brain. And then you have below, which is in your abdominal area, which is called the abdominal brain, all right? That is the abdominal brain. Because once again, it has neurons there, just like you have in your brain. So you have actually four brains, all right? And the one up top of the one of the three up top, which is known as your brain, you have what is known as the wajet or the wajeta. And the wajeta is become um, ushita or washita. Uh, which symbolizes the serpent to the eye, as you see here. That's what it symbolizes, but it breaks down to one over 64. From smell, one and a half, to sight, one fourth, to thought, one eighth, to hearing, one sixteenth, to taste, one thirty-two, to touch, one over 64. And those parts become what we now refer to as the third eye area in the brain which is overseen by the third ventricle and it correl um, correlates to the pituitary gland, the hypothalamus gland and the pineal gland in particular, all right? Also correlating to the thalamus, um, the, um, the thalamus gland. But we'll get to all of that in a second. If we go to Genesis, the 32nd chapter, the 30th verse, King James Version, and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. So they already told you scripturally that pineal or pineal is the area in which that you want to go and find God in order to see God face to face, symbolizes the seventh chakra, all right? Hosea 13, 4, yet I am the Lord thy God in the land of Egypt, and thou shalt not uh, uh, know God, but no God but me, for there is no savior besides me. So if God dwells there in the sense of your brain in the third region or the third ventricle and is known as the pineal or pineal gland, then we know that God sits on his throne, which symbolizes the soul being embedded inside of the pineal gland. The soul is the real you, which is your savior. Your Lord and personal savior is your soul. All right. Wonder why. The pastors and um and um and um Pastor Rib and and um and um Rabbi Pork Chop. Yeah, I know rabbis don't eat pork chops, but they do in this case. But they be giving you a whole lot of bullshit. In particular, pig shit. <laughs> right? But you know, you got Imam uh 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 um uh, 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 um Pootie Tang. All right. You got all of these individuals giving you all of this religious information, but not decoding it for you. And it's not being decoded. And it's done purposely. All right. In many cases, it's done purposely. Because melanin carbon is very heavily produced in the pineal gland, meaning that melanin is connected directly with the soul principle, which is the chemical key to all life. All right. So it is even metaphysically addressed in the Bible, as I showed you in Genesis 32nd chapter, the 30th verse. So with more melanin carbon 
being excreted from the pineal gland in the form of DMT, the dimethyltryptamine. What happens is that you are able to bridge from the physical earthly world into Asgard, the spiritual world. And Asgard is nothing more than from the word astral, as an astral plane, the plane of the stars, the star plane. Right? So the chemical DMT is the bridgeway between the spiritual realm and the earthly realm. All right? The ancient Egyptians told you this already as they always show you with Ra in between the eyes. All right? The Buddhas showed you this with the dot between the eyes or right above the two eyes in the sense of that forehead. The yogis show you this with the bindis right in the center of the forehead. All right? And it's red, just like Ra, as you see here on the temple walls of Egypt, Kemet, Tamari, whatever name you want to refer to it as. All right? So it's right in the third ventricle, this fluid filled space that the pineal gland oversees all the activities in the body for it is the, it is the master, it is the master gland of the physical body. The master, all right? You know, this is, what, who, this is who Bruce Leroy was looking for. You know, as Lois Self, show sure enough, had to keep asking him, who's the master? And it wasn't until he got that great epiphany as his head was being dunked in that water that the nigga began to start realizing, I am. And upon realizing I am, the nigga received the glow. You got that glow, that glow, you know you got the show. You gotta show that glow, that glow. So, before you get the soul glow, you got to illuminate the 12 disciples, which are the 12 cranial nerves, which I was the first to tell you all of this in the conscious community back in 2004. We broke this down. Nobody else was talking about this information on video. Like it didn't exist, like it wasn't even relevant to you. This is the most relevant information that you can ever have. You have the olfactory nerve, which is for the smell. You have the optic nerves, which of course is for vision. You have the acoustic, which is the um, the vesta, um, brulocal, uh, clear nerve, which is for hearing and balance. You have the glossophygeal nerve, which is for taste and throat sensations. You have the um, oculomotor um, and the um, triclear. Um, and the obdicine nerves, which is for eye movement. You have the, the trigemial nerve, which is for facial sensation and jaw movement. You have the facial nerve, which is for facial expression and taste. Okay. You have the vagus nerve, which is for breathing, circulation and digestion. Why? Because from out of the brain region, it goes the Vargas nerve goes all the way down into the digestive system, into the digestive or the abdominal region. Near the, all right, near the iota. All right. You have the hypoglossial nerve, which is for the tongue movement. And you have the spinal accessory nerve, which is for the movement of the neck and back muscles. These 12 pair of cranial nerves must be illuminated by Kundalini or set. And she comes up through the seven caves and she finds the missing pieces of all saw and put his ass back together again, just like Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall. And upon putting the pieces back together again, Tahuti now got to come in and activate that phallus or pineal, or which is the 
pineal gland in the brain. Cause the pineal gland is shaped just like the head of the penis. So now the pineal gland becomes engulfed with blood. That's the magic of Tahuti. The place of Saul's phallus back upon his body so that he can give birth to Heru by our set transforming into Ba, the soul. And she flaps her wings rapidly in order to make our soul orgasm. But this is talking about a brain orgasm to produce Heru, Christ consciousness. Get out the stories. That's the problem. You stuck in fantasy land, fables and shit. You too fucking old to be stuck in fables. You are too old to be stuck. What the fuck it look like you be 90, 100 years old waiting for a cracker to come out the sky to save your ass. You too old for that shit. You too old. Get off it. Here's black Jesus with his 12 disciples. All symbolic to the pineal gland and his 12 pair of cranial nerves that we just went over. Oh, here, oh, white Jesus. The pale one himself. The one you got stuck on. You couldn't see yourself out the way of a paper bag. But he's with his 12 disciples. Oh, but we decoded this shit because we find out that that's nothing more than Aries and Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Scorpio, Libra. I mean, um, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. The 12 zodiac signs. And Jesus himself represents the sun. And those three, each one breaks up into three months which symbolizes spring equinox summer solstice fall equinox or autumn equinox and winter solstice the story of moses takes place in the old testament chapters exodus leviticus numbers and deuteronomy those four jesus life takes place in four chapters of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Four is one of the those biblical numbers codes that designate the 360 plus five days of the earth rotation, as they claim, at 23.5 degree angles of his axis. So it revolves around the sun, or in this case, ether, producing the so-called four seasons called spring, resurrection, summer, Ascension, autumn, fall, betrayal, and winter, substitute, and tomb. This is all biblical. Okay? And we won't get into the earth rotating and all of that shit. Because the flat earthers don't believe that the earth spin. And there's some things I got to ask about that too. But I won't get into that now. That's later videos. But it all correlates to those four in the Old Testament of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, which they claim Moses wrote to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Or all symbolizes the four children of Heru. All right? The four children of Heru. All right. It be Senuf. Do a Mufti. Happy. Imseti. These are the four children of Heru. Symbolizes the intestines, stomach, lungs, and liver. Fire, earth, water, and air. That means Heru symbolizes those four elements together, which is ether. The fifth element, or Genesis, your genes. All right? All correlates. You got to pay attention. Luke 22, 9. Apostles Acts 
Where do you want us to prepare for you at? Luke twenty two ten. Jesus replied, as you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water or a pitcher of water, as it says in the King James Version, will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters or follow him into his house. Well, houses are known to be 12 houses in the Zodiac. And the man with the pitcher of water is Aquarius. In other words, the age of Heru. Because Aquarius symbolizes Heru, the age of knowing that you are now stepped into. Go back to the 1969 song, Age of Aquarius, by Marilyn McCool and her crew. All right? Marilyn McCool and her crew. And it was called the Age of Aquarius. All right? The most popular song in 1969. Right, and the age of Aquarius has always been represented in the zodiac as a man pouring a bucket or a pitcher of water. Water is symbolized as truth. We are now in the age of truth. Therefore, the flow of water symbolizes constant abundance of truth. Hence, in this age of information, you will be able to find the Christ within. We are the bearers of that. Look at Aquarius. On a pitcher of water. Oh my God. And right above the man with the pitcher of water is Pegasus. Pegasus. Right below Pisces, in which Aquarius is in front of, is Cetus. Cetus is known to be the well. And in the Old Testament, Jonah got swallowed up by the well. Well, that is symbolic to the three days that the sun spin within the belly of Cetus, the well. Talking about up in the sky. Up, up in the sky. Okay. That's what that's talking about. Get it right. We ain't got time to be playing. Too much shit on the line. All right. So Cetus is the well up in the sky. The sun creeps through the belly for three days and three nights, just like Jonah in the belly of the well in the Old Testament. And Jesus said that he would be like Jonah and be in the sepulcher for three days and three nights, the sepulcher, the tomb for three days and three nights, all symbolic. His was talking about during the three days of winter. December the 21st to December the 24th. Those three days and three nights. And then on the 25th, he resurrects and begins his journey back to the virgin. His mother, Virgo, Mary. Nine months later to be born again. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. you have December 22nd, 23rd, 24th, the three days. And there it is, the Southern Cross, the crux in which that Jesus got crucified on. And there go the three kings. Lord have mercy. And the three kings gave gifts unto Jesus. Cause it was a star that they follow. Oh, the star was the serious. But this shit is getting serious. It's the star in the east. Oh, the eastern star. You might know them as within Freemasonry. The birth of God's son at winter solstice. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Hallelujah. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Uh, fuck that. Here it is. China, Xi'an, pyramids. The three wise men in physical form for you, because you can't touch the three that's out there in space, which is the constellation of Orion's belt. 
but you can touch the three in Xi'an Providence in China. You can go to Mexico. And Tiahuanacan to the pyramids there. You can go to Egypt and go to the Great Pyramids. You could touch these three, which is in replica to the three in the sky. Cause as the Lord prayer says, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thou would be done on earth as it is in heaven. So here it is on earth as it is in heaven. Well, you have as above, so below. Now let, let's get with the as within. You already got the without. Now you get the book, man, the grand symbol of the mysteries, thoughts in occult anatomy by Manly P. Hall. He states, the third ventricle is the vaulted chamber in an, of initiation. Around it sits three kings. Could these be the same three kings that bought Jesus gold, frankincense, and myrrh? Huh. <laughs> Could it be the great, the three great centers of life and power? The pituitary body, the pineal body, and the optic thalamus, which is called the hypothalamus. The third ventricle overseen ha, by the pineal gland ha, is the seat of the soul ha, located between the eyes ha, and just above the root of the nose. Ha, I rhymed on that one. It is here ha, that the jewels are placed in the forehead ha, of the Buddhas. Ha, and at this point, ha, the serpent rose ha, from the crown of the ancient Egyptian. Ha, and they are called ha, the three ha, sun, moon, and star. Ha, Coincidental? Nah, I think not. Cause they align in the same way in the brain. Hypothalamus, pineal gland, pituitary gland. And they point towards the star series. Oh, the third eye area. There it is. Luke 22, 12. And he will show you a large furnished upper room. This is the upper room, y'all. So make the preparations there. You got to make the preparations right there in your own mind, in your own brain. You got to make it there. Or you can't make it anywhere. So Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is received by breathing. <laughs> and as you see, look at the airflow, go up the nasal cavity on the pick. It goes up into the discrimination center, the olfactory nerve. That's where it goes to so the olfactory nerve. It's called the spear of Doth within the occult on the tree of life. They don't talk about this, but Dorf is the olfactory nerve, which is one of the 12 cranial nerves that I told you about earlier. See, see, we're not playing. We got to clear this shit up. Revelation 21.10, the great city, the holy Jerusalem descended out the heavens from God. This is why the Jehovah Witnesses love putting that shit on their covers. The great city. The crystal city, how we know it's crystal? Well, shit, let's keep reading. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone, most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, the crystal city. What's up with this crystal city? Well, there's 12 and had a gate, Why? what? A wall great and high and had 12 gates. Uh-oh, the 12 pair of cranial nerves and at the gates, 12 angels, the 12 gates and the 12 angels, 24. So 
So the 12 pair of cranial nerves also symbolizes the 24 mentioned in the book of Revelation. The 24 mentioned in the book of Revelations, 12 times two is 24. So it has the 12 gates and at the gates, 12 angels and names written thereon. Names written thereon. What's the names of the 12 pair of cranial nerves? I gave them to you already. <laughs> Which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So see, you're a true child of the children of Israel, of the 12 tribes of Israel, until you activate the 12 pair of cranial nerves in your brain. And you establish the crystal palace, the crystal city. The thalamus, the pineal gland, hypothalamus, the pituitary gland. Oh, shit now. Now we getting it. The rebirth equals as your cerebral spinal fluid. Christ climbs up your 33 vertebrates, Jacob's ladder, and meets your 12 cranial nerves, the 12 disciples. It ignites the pineal gland, which is your resurrection. Oh, shit. Now I can't get more plainer and clearer than this. You can't overstand this shit. You better get up out this room. But this ain't the place for you. Revelations 19, 11 through 16. Christ on a white horse. They love talking about Jesus on that white horse now. In the book of Revelations. Now I saw heaven open. And behold, a white horse. White horse. You got to ride a white horse. That's old school for y'all. And he was sat on him, was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he judged and make wars. His eyes were like flames of fire and his head was many crowns. See, they already told you where the white horse resides at. Where the eyes, hence the optical nerve and the, in the head area where there's many crowns as in the 12 crowns or the 12 cranial nerves. See, they already told you. They're trying to give you the symbolism, but you couldn't get that because you so busy caught them to religion and thinking that this shit was outside of yourself. See, I'm a master goddamn metaphysician. This is what metaphysics really look like. This is, this is the shit that you got to know. You need to know. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. Emmanuel is the name. How you know? Because that was in the Old Testament. Emmanuel is the name, which means God within you or God within. That's what Emmanuel really means, the God within. Don't mean God outside of you or around you. It means God within you. He was clothed with the robe dipped in blood. And his name called the word of God. So they told you what can activate that, the word of God. I gave you the tones. Oh, oh, I, I, E, Y. I gave you the words of God, the word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, follow him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he strikes the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. What's the rod of iron? That's your spinal column. Iron is your, your heme cells of your blood. Heme, iron, your heme is iron. That's the rod of iron. He himself treads the wine press of the fierceness and wrath of almighty God. And he had on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lords of Lords. Why was it written on his thigh? Wasn't it the thigh that Jacob wrestled with the angel Uriel and the Uriel angel struck him in his thigh. 
And then his name was changed to Israel, means to ascend to God. So this is talking about the ascension, the real ascension, not no fucking UFOs, metal ships coming down to get your monkey ass. You live in a dream. You live in a dream world, Neo. A fucking dream world, Neo. Wake the fuck up. Or get the broke the fuck up. Because if it was sex, you would smoke this shit up. Oh, that's old school again. That's Killer Army. Ha <laughs> ha. But anyway, as I showed you earlier, the man on the white horse, that is Aquarius, because right above his head is Pegasus. That is Jesus on the white horse. There it is. Damn. Right? And Chuck D would say, Bam, there it is. And can you say, God damn, this is a dope jam. Public enemy number one. All right, so right here. What does that Jesus on the white horse symbolizes? It actually symbolizes the hippocampus area in the brain. Right? The hippocampus, this area in the brain, apart from its other functions, is primarily responsible for its short term memory. The hippocampus area in the brain is named after the resemblance to a seahorse. Oh, shit. The Greek, all right, name seahorse. And also from the Greek is hippos, horse. All right. And then campos, sea monster. And guess what? It is white matter. So white matter plus horse or sea monster, hence symbolizes the white horse, is a major component of the brain of humans and other vertebrates. Humans and other mammals have two campi, um, hypocampiuses, one in each side of the brain. The hypocampus belongs to the limbic system and plays important roles in the consolidation of information for sh from short-term memory to long-term memory. This is why you forgot your past lives. Okay, this is the veil. This is what it said that Dr. York speaks of that the berry gland originally resided in the hippocampus area of the brain. Now it was, it was situated down in the lower chin area. About an inch or so up from the throat and about an inch or so back from the chin. Okay. So, and in spatial memory, that enables navigation. So that helped the pineal gland help you with your navigational system. That was your built-in GPS. You would have remembered where you was going and where you came. The hippocampus is located under the cerebral cortex. It contains two main interlocking parts. The hippocampus proper, also called what? Amen's horn. This is why you see Amen Ra with the horns in the form of a ram. And the dictated gyros. This is why. Here it is. Here it is. There go Amen's horns, lateral ventricles, pair. Horseshoe shape. There it is. Horseshoes again. Horse again. In the cerebral hemispheres. Anterior or close. Separate only by thin sep um, septum pellucidum or pellucium. Here it is. Here is the dove that rests on the Christ. Cress. Not a single man. But all of us have the Christ or the dove that lighted over top of Jesus while he got baptized in the river Jordan by John the Baptist. Ha! We all have this dove connected to the brain or else we wouldn't be able to see in the illusionary realm on the physical plane. In other words, you wouldn't be able to dream. None of this stuff is real. 
Yes, Adalabroth, aka Jehovah, symbolizes the Medulam Legata, memory seat, DNA. The Demiurge created this. He knows and sees everything because we're all inside of an interactive game, program of a computer brain, the brain of God, i.e. called the universe, you and I verse. And the two thieves are the two eyes that see in the hologram. And remember the two thieves on each side of Jesus? You had the one on the left said, if you be the Christ, won't you get your ass down from here? And the other one said, man, won't you stop fucking with him? Man, he's the one. Man, I believe he's the Christ. And yo, remember this day in paradise, yo. And Jesus said, Shh, surely I will. I will remember you this day in paradise. And then Jesus gave up the ghosts. He gave up the ghosts. That's what happened. According to your story, right? But look at the dove in the lower left hand corner and then look at the area in the brain. That's the dove that rested on top of the head of the Christ. Every month when the moon goes into your sun sign position, when you were born there, is a germ seed that is deposited and planted into your solar plexus. See, you born every month in the manger. So when Negro's talking about women in her menstrual cycle every month, well, God damn it, every month when your birth sign, all right? Moon goes into your sun sign. When you were born there, right, is a seed, a germ that is deposited, planted in your solar plexus, the manger, Bethlehem, and the oil you needs to return to which it came. The oil is basically differentiated in the pineal gland and the pituitary glands before it is sent down the spinal cord. The pineal gland is the electric portion and the Pituitary gland is the magnetic portion. These two portions, the pineal and the pituitary gland, being that's the electrical and magnetic, it's the electrical magnetic force, which is sympathical and sympathical force that actually holds your physical body composition together. When you die, you're no longer breathing, no longer sympathical force, centrifugal force, your body decomposed, you no longer is composed. All right, the oil was brought down the spinal cord by the Eda and the Pingala nerves. And remember, I told you that the Eda and the Pingala symbolizes the left nostril is the Eda, which is magnetic, moon, passive, and all right, negative. And the right nostril is the Pingala, electric, um, electric, positive active, right? These two nerves is what brings the oil, all right, down. The Kundalini becomes alive with the oil and the Kundalini buffers and it arrives at the sacral area waiting to be germinated once a month, 12 times a year. Hence the 12 days of Christmas my true love gave to me. A partridge in a pear tree. The fuck is the partridge, yo? There it is. Bam. The partridge is the dove that rests upon the Christ. The Christ. Yes. If we are able to transmute the seed, Jesus, and cause it to rise, resurrect up the spinal cord to eventually reach the medulla oblongata the place of the skull or Mount Calvary or in Aramaic, Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, the pons and the midbrain, and it crosses the vargus nerve, also known as the, um, the pneumogastric nerve, a pair of cranial nerves that descends from the brain area, pineal and pituitary gland, respectively, or feeds the lungs and the stomach 
and his network of nerves, also called the tree of life or Kares Mesh tree. You get it? The ancients knew that the seed that is born once a month in the manger in the city of Bethlehem is the Christ. It's called Kares. Or Christos. Krishna. This is the realness of this. See, they don't break it down to you like they need to. You better get it. You better get it. The vagus nerve, as you see here. The cranial root, the spinal root. The accessory nerve. The vagus nerve is where we told you it reaches from out of the brain down all the way into the digestive abdominal brain area. The vagus nerve branches up the vagus nerve. It goes down and around, up and down. All right? The solar plexus is where this is called the manger. All right? The brain is also the third ventricle area where the pineal gland is also known as the manger. Down to the solar plexus is also called the manger. Bethlehem. Beth within Hebrew means house. Your body is the house of God. Studies also taking place in the West on the Dantian mind. Your gut has a mind of its own, the second brain. Get the book by Michael Gershon, MD, all right? They tell you the same thing nowadays. So you have the holy colonsum, produce the chrysum or caress and oil. And the oil is excreted from the pineal gland and from the pineal gland, the color is golden. That's the honey. And then from the pituitary gland, the HGH, which is whitish. In color is produced. So how you have so here you have the pineal or what is known as the pinoline and the DMT produce, which is this chrysum, this this honey looking substance, and that whitest substance, which is the milk. This is the land of milk and honey that we really talking about, not canon land, which is in Jerusalem, which the Jews and Palestinians are fighting over. Talking about that's the land of milk and honey when it's a fucking desert. Stop falling for that dumb shit. That's what the Hebrew Israelites did. Up on the Ben Amin, they went over there to the damn desert. When the damn shit was allegorical, metaphysical, esoterical, occult, science, god damn it. Oh yeah. This is the realness of this. Better get it right. But shit is getting serious. All right, Jermaine Jackson told you that shit already. Let's get serious. <laughs> All right, old school. All right, so right here, chrism, crystals, and oil, which falls down from the spinal cord to the sacrum, the sacred fluid. Santa Claus brings the gifts. He's bringing the gifts, y'all. And he presents, and he's bringing the presents, and he's bringing them down the chimney. Oh, shit. This is the origin of the Christmas story. The Holy Claustrum. In other words, Santa Claus. There it is, Santa Claus. And secret, secretion, sacred, sacrum, all of that is talking about right here to the right, which is at the bottom part, which is a downward triangular shape. Bone, right above the caucus, that's the sacrum bone. That's the sacrum. That's the holy abode of the Kundalini and the eight dividing cells of mitosis called the blashlopores, which symbolizes the eight or the eight natures or the eonides or better yet of the eonides, which means nine because one um, is born forth from Atum who emerged from out of the state of Noom. He brought forth his eight children, which symbolizes the eight children in which that Atum brought forth, hence Adam, brought forth the eight children. Hence you have the same Adam and Eve story 
All right. Same Adam and Eve story. So Adam and Eve, and then they produce Seth and Akimala, Cain and Luluwa. All right. All right. Or oh, Abel, I should say. Excuse me. I went to um. I, is Abel and um Akimala. All right. Cain and Luluwa, and then Seth and his mate, which they don't go into name into the naming of. But it goes into the signs of eight, even biblically. They telling you, in order to find out the names of the of the children of Adam and Eve, you have to go to. The book outside the Bible, you have to go to the forgotten books of the lost books of the Bible and the forgotten books of Eden and the Apocrypha to find out this shit. Go and do your research and study and make ourselves approved. So now that we understand the science and the story of Santa Claus, the Holy Colossum, The bringing down of the gifts from Santa from out of the brain, the colosseum. And if you don't know what the colosseum um, area is, is the area in the brain on top um, area in which that um, helps shield and block out um, and stop the rattling of the brain. And it's right there in this um, brain area. Okay. Z z z z z z z old school. All right, so right here, that's what they're talking about. Is this Santa Colomes or Holy Colostrum, right? Which is Santa Claus. All right. So, and Santa is nothing more than, of course, Satan. And the word Satan within Arabic means a thing of clay. It's talking about your physical body, because allegedly you was made from the dust of the ground and mist of water. Hence clay, all right? So you're Satan. Your body is, that is, the Titan, all right? Then, of course, Satan symbolizes Saturn, which Saturn is the sixth planet from the sun. Oh, they go to number six, which symbolizes 666, which is talking about the structure of your body, your anatomy, which is carbon. And the influence from Saturn has upon that with his rings. The rings of Saturn, the rings of Satan. All right. Talking about also the magnetic influence in which that it has, which is talking about on your physical body, which is actually your melanin, in which that produces the rings of Saturn, which is your aura. Oh shit. You know, we got to go, we got to go deep. We got to tell you what's going on. Peep game that in astrology, Saturn has the control and influence over your skeleton system, your DNA, and the manufacturing of your blood. Coincidence? I think not. Message. So here we have how the physical body is broken down into pi and the golden mean ratio. The mathematics of the human body, for it is based on the golden mean ratio, which measures approximately 1.618 and can be and basically can be derived through the Fibonacci numbers. All right, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 5, 89, 144. 144. Remember that. 144. So the soul to the navel. So to the crown is on pi, all right, which is 3.14, all right? So to the knee, so to the navel, navel to the shoulder, navel to the crown, knee to the calf muscles, knee to the sole, navel to the mid thigh, navel to knees, navel to sternum or mid chest, navel to Rest um base um base of throat, throat base to temple and brow bone, 
rope base to crown, on and on and on. And it shows you that it's broken down into the golden mean ratio or the golden ratio. Many studies have been done finding that the golden ratio in the face, human face and the hands, the whole body as we just read parts of, but these are only some of the occurrences of the golden ratio in our anatomy. Saturn controls and influences that, along with the star constellation Sirius. As Sirius goes around each other in elliptical patterns, Sirius A and Sirius B, Polo Tolo and Ziggy Tolo, which is in the same elliptical pattern as our DNA. And we go around it every 25,000 years. So every 25,000 years, Elijah Muhammad says, is a renewal of history. Coincidence that we just finished December the 21st, 2012. We just finished a 25,000 year renewal of history. And now we have entered a whole new 25,000 year renewal of history. And based on our thoughts, as I showed you earlier, is what will resonate for the next 25,000 years. We are the bearers of this new history, of this new ascension, of this new knowledge and wisdom. Certainly, there are more of these beautiful proportions out there, ranging from the extraordinary, the extraordinary to the mundane. Scientists in various fields, whether it is anatomy, chemistry, physics, mathematics, astronomy, theology, and also in the fields of music, architecture, and art, continues to be fascinated with the golden ratio. It is even found in our DNA. There it is. The perfect body is in our genes. So we come to find out that the energy from that we receive from Sirius first hits Saturn. Coincidence? I think not. The sacred temples of the ancients were constructed to reflect the human body. Egyptologists are a um, the Lubix or a swallow, the Lubix, in his famous book, The Temple in Man. He also wrote a book called The Temple of Man. He, but in this one, he says of the great house of God called the Temple of Luxor, all right, the Temple of, um, um, of Luxor from the Pharaoh, the Pharaonic um, Egypt. He says the outline of human skeleton traits according to the anthropometrical. Um, Methods and very carefully constructed, bone by bone, was superimposed on the general plan of the temple. The head is located exactly in the sanctuaries of the covered temple. Right, this is why the head is called the Holy of Holies. In the Mosaic Old Testament version, you have the Holy of Holies, then you have the holy place, and then you have the outer um, place. The outer place symbolizes the lower astronomy, astro astronomy, all right, the lower portion of the body. Then you have the mid portion of the body where the heart is, the holy place. Then you have the holy of holies, which is the head. So the head is located exactly in the sanctuaries of the covered temple. The sanctuaries of the bark of Amun is the oral cavity. The word made flesh. The chest is located in the um, first hypostyle of the covering temple and ends with the temple's platform. The anatomy is represented by the peristyle courts and the um, pubis is located exactly at the door separating the peristyle from the um, colonnade of Amun. This marvelous colonnade is in fact dedicated to the femurs, the thigh. Uh oh, they go to thighs again. The knees are at the site of the gate in the front of which sits the two colossus marked by the entrance of the col colonnade. One might be tempted to think that the skeleton had been constructed to be superimposed on the temple. But any skeleton can be projected thus on the plan of the temple and will coincide with it. Moreover, all of the proportions of the skeleton may be checked against the actual measurements of the temple. There it is, he shows you. How does the energy move in the body? But when speaking of the energy of the energy within and around one's body, all right, because remember, the rings of Saturn produces the rings of your body, which are your which is your auric field. All right, along with the skeleton system, which happens to be 200 bones, approximately 200 
bones or more. Some say it's 200 and um, six bones in your body, but 204 to six bones in your body. But whatever the case is, it's about 200 bones. And so what they find out that if you read the book of Enoch, it tells you that 200 angels came from the planet Saturn. That's where the fallen angels first resided at before they came to Earth was on the planet Saturn. Coincidence? I think not. So the 200 fallen angels, that became the 200 fallen angles of light that form what is called your 200 bones in your adult body. But we know as a child, as a baby, it's about 300 bones, but then about 100 or so, or less than 100 or so, fuse together and become one bone. All right, so this is what we know. It is often perceived as something mystical or unrealistic. However, the body's energy is realistic and scientifically as is realistic and scientific as your muscle, bones, and bodily system. The energy within your body is directed to nerves based um, um based on your thoughts and feelings. And it's carried throughout your body via a web of strong connective tissues. Okay. And which is emitted by via your aura, which are lines, all right, fields, magnetic fields, that's what it is, all right, vasia, as in flossia, all right, and the flossia tissue can be thought of as a fiber active of your body and a fluid filled fibers that nerve energy envelops and isolate muscles, tendons, organs, and blood vessels and provides, all right, protection and support within the body. Although um, fascias um, are everywhere in the body, the blue band is the, um, at the left shows how the flossia joints um, together in, um, and basically in horizontal bonds across the body, causing a concentration of energy located in a ligaments with the seven main chakras or energy centers. In short, we are energetic beings, all right? Now, some of it I couldn't see too well, but it's all right, it's blurry, but shit, we got through it. But right here, we got Roy G. Biv. Base, which symbolizes leg. Sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, crown. Crown symbolizes gold. So turning base lead to gold. All right, and you can do that through the sounds. The bass is the C note. Sacral is the D note. Solar plexus is the E note. Heart is the F note. Throat is the G note. Third eye is the A note. Crown is the B note. All right, we went over this. So really, this is heaven. This is earth. And that is hell. Once again, this is inside of you. So wherever the Kundalini resides at, that's what you're going to experience. So upon death, if your Kundalini is residing at the base chakra, then you will be in hell. If the Kundalini is residing at the heart chakra, then you will be in an earth-like, third-dimensional, apparent reality. However, which is called purgatory. However, if your kundalini is resonating at the crown chakra, you'll be in heaven. You get the book, Nur Ankamen, he tells you heaven is located in the ionosphere. Because the ionosphere is a exact mirror. All right, it's a mirror. And the likenesses in the ionosphere reflects no matter how faint exactly everything that's here on earth this is why when you go to sleep at night and you go and you and your mind goes into the ionosphere all right which is the astral plane all right because the stars are in the firmaments which is in the firmaments of of the earth all right this is even told to you by the flat earthers. That's like I said, there's some things that I have to agree with. So here we have the book of revelations. It's all about the seven chakras. It mentions the number seven, 50, um, 
five times. The seven churches, the seven letters, the seven spirits, the seven lamps, the seven stars, the seven seals, the seven horns, the seven eyes, the seven angels, the seven trumpets, the seven heads, the seven crowns, the seven plagues, the seven bowls, the seven hills, the seven kings, the seven visions, etc. The number 144 or 144,000 in the book of Revelations also is in regard to the seven chakras. When it takes literally, it represents the exact number of souls that will ascend to God. In Kundalini Yoga, they teach that each of the seven chakras is frequency of light energy that can easily get blocked by negative emotional thoughts, emotions and thoughts during the course of development. The symbols for the root chakra number is four for the lower chakra or the root chakra is four petals. The navel chakra is six petals. The solar plexus is 10 petals. The heart chakra is 12 petals and the throat chakra is 16 petals, which um, essentially equals 48. Now the third eye chakra is represented by the number 96, yet it only has two petals. This is because it is two times as powerful as the five lower chakras. When added up to 46, you got two times 48 equals 96. The crown chakra is said to be 1,000 times more powerful than the six lowest chakras. So when you add up the six lowest chakras, you get four plus six plus 10 plus 12 plus 16 plus 96 equals 144. Then you times 144 times 1,000, you get 144,000. You get it? So the 144,000 is within you. And plus you have 72 crystal-like magnetic silicon crystal quartz crystals at the base of your spine, which must be raised up in order to meet the, the 72,000 um, crystals in the brain. This is symbolic to what we went over the other um, last week with the 72 angels and the 72 demons. All this shit is in you. Hence, when they come together, it forms 144,000. Hence, when you relieve yourself from karmic debt, self-judgment, you will emit the highest frequency of light and you will no longer have to return to this realm of form. Ha! Why don't the preachers ha, and the pastors ha, and tell you this? Ha, why? Ha. Mind and the heart power. That's the mind and the heart power. All right. The schematic of the heart's magnetic field. All right. This is what also helps produce the auric field around your body. There's three levels to the auric field. You have your inner aura, your health aura, and your outer aura. Normally, it's only three feet outside of your physical body. That means if you reach out your arms, and then you take your arms, which are out in front of you, and you go in a circular motion. If you was able to take your arms and go behind your back, it will actually form a circle based on the length of your arms. And that would be the normal average person's auric field. Okay. You want to learn how to expand your auric field? I've given before the science of how to do that. It's called the three breaths of pranayama or pranic healing. You have the 6363 breath technique, the 7171 breath technique, and the empty retention breath technique. These techniques are taught within pranic healing. You can get the book, all right, by Cho on Kok Sui, Master Ko Cho Sui. One and two, pranic healing and advanced pranic healing, All right? These are the signs. See, you got to go everywhere to get this shit. And you can't do that if you're in academia because you'll be ridiculed and be seen as a fool. Luckily, I went to a metaphysical school and got my doctrine. <laughs> Therefore, I can go everywhere and tie this shit in. And yet, those in academia 
won't call me a fool because they know what I'm saying is true based on their studies. But only the grassroots fools who don't really read would think that this shit is pseudo. But this is a pseudo. But see, the only ones who would think that this shit is pseudo is those who don't have activation of their chakras and don't know shit about energy, don't know nothing about mind power, the law of attraction. They're just going through life saying shit, talking shit, fucking shit, eating shit. That's it. The heart too has its own brain. The conscious mind stores the part of the creation force. The heart code. Get this book by Paul Purcell, PhD. All right? The heart has its own code. Go guess what? They found out that there's neurons in the heart. In fact, in according to the Rosicrucian teachings, in the right ventricle of the heart, there's a seed atom. Electricity manifests as an electrical field within and around the body, subtle but detectable. This image shows that the use of the ribbons that models that current patterns inside the thoraxis of the rocks, the colors along the ribbons indicates potential. Red indicates positive, blue indicates negative. Electric current near the heart. And it is coming from out of that seed atom, which inscribes all of your life experiences upon it. This is why the ancestors used to keep the heart and weigh the heart against the feather. You see how we putting all this shit together? See, this, this, this is what this is what a this is what metaphysicians do. Put this shit together for you. In Tao, we believe that the heart fibers are bundled in seven layers, which generate seven electromagnetic fields and seven states of compassion, energy, love, appreciation, grateful, thankful, kindness, gentle. And these seven correlates to the seven bodies, your physical body, which is your material body, your ethereal body, your astral body, which is your emotional body, your mental body, your causal body, your spiritual body, and your soul body. But in order to enlighten all three of those, you must use the love, appreciation, gratitude, or grateful, thankful, kindness, and gentle. You must activate all these principles. This is what is taught to you within the teachings of Taoism. This is what is taught to you within the teachings of the Tibetan monks. They teach you this. He told you that the head, the Dantian center is the crystal palace. So you bring energy into the upper room, hence the upper Dantian, just like Jesus breathed on his disciples. You too, as you inhale, you bring the energy into that area. The more energy that you store there, you begin to start having a high IQ. You become a genius, an inventor. If you store the energy into the heart center, which is the middle Dantian, remember we said the upper Dantian is the, is the heaven, the crystal palace. This is the heaven that they seen of Jesus coming out or God coming out on his throne on. Remember, it's talking about the head, the Dantian center. Then you have the heart center, which is actually the earth center, the mid Dantian. Then you had the lower Dantian, which is the hell, the abdominal Dantian, lower Dantian, right? So at the lower Dantian, if you bring energy into there, you receive a longer life, a healthier life. So hell ain't all that bad. <laughs> if you use hell properly, you can heal. Oh shit, oh wait, 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 oh, H-E-L-L -L can become H-E-A-L. Oh hell, ho <laughs> ho! So, we're looking at also the heart chakra in which that the heart center, the mid Dantian, and if you bring any chi into there, you can begin to start having love. Unconditional love, appreciation, grateful, thankful, kindness, and gentleness. 
These are what you will radiate. All right. We recommend that you start out first with storing the energy into your lower dantian and not to mess with the mid dantian or upper dantian because you ain't ready. All right. That shit is for experts once you get to those levels. You still a baby. You need to learn how to absorb energy into your lower dantian. Right? This turns the three minds into one mind at the lower dantian and keeps on spiraling and expanding the awareness of the primordial or the primordial force charged by the universe. Because each dantian is a battery. In particular, the lower dantian, a battery, the door of life. All right? The navel and the kidneys is the door of life, the dantian. Like the back of the um, like back to the mother's womb, all right? The pre, um, what is called the prenatal energy, all right? So we give you techniques. See, we just don't talk it. See, you got a lot of people on YouTube that's doing a lot of talking, but ain't giving you shit practical. But then again, most of you niggas don't want anything practical. You just want to hit, you hear nigga hoop and holler. And don't say shit and don't give you shit and be and be like just like the motherfuckers on church sunday meetings oh reverend um james he preached a good sermon and then you ask him what the fuck he say what what did he teach what did he talk about oh well he talked about the bible and he talked about jesus well goddamn that's every week <laughs> it's every damn sunday <laughs> But no, you got caught up in the goddamn sensationalism. The fucking hooping and hollering. That's why sometimes I got to hoop and holler <laughs> and do all my, you know, do all of that. Because it seems like shit, that's what gets you. I got to do what gets you so you can get what I got to give. All right? Malachi York said that shit. All right? I ain't trying to give necessarily what he got to give or what he had to give. I'm giving you the facts. The truth of this shit. This shit is about you. She gung breathing, god damn it. Exercise, abdominal, deep breathing, dantian breathing. The key to using dantian breathing is to heal yourself, is to gently inhale all the way down into your dantian area, the lower dantian, which is about an inch or two below your navel. As you inhale, you put your attention on your lower dantian and sense your breath energy filling in your lower dantian or abdomen, your abdominal brain. All right. Feel how your abdominal naturally expands. If you like, you can put your hands on your lower belly. All right. See belly breathing also. It's the same as Dantian breathing. To help attract the breath there, as your hands are located there, it helps to attract the breath there. As you exhale, since all the tensions and toxins going out your um, breath, um, as your abdominal naturally contracts. Learn to at be attentive to the warm, the vital warmth and vibration of the breath energy remaining in your abdominal region as you exhale. Guard it with your awareness. Feel it being absorbed deep into your cells as, your, as you exhale waste products upward and out through your nose or mouth. Do not use any force in doing this practice. Use only your awareness or intention. So how you do it? Sit or um, stand or sit in the chair with your spine straight. Bring both hands over your lower dantian. Breathe in and out through the nose. Inhale and visualize a golden ball of energy like the small sun growing in your lower dantian. And as you exhale, visualize the golden ball intensifying its glow. With each breath, see this um, light growing brighter and brighter. 36 times. Inhale and exhale. Practice for at least three to five minutes. 10 minutes is ideal throughout the day. Take one or two Dantian breaths to recharge your internal energy. That battery, Dantian is the battery, all right? Your melanin brings and draws the energy in and you can settle it right there in the lower Dantian, right? The lower Dantian, which is the symbolic to the area of the root chakra as it is the sacral bone region, the base chakra, all oh shit, the root chakra is the so-called devil. How do we know that? Because it's the color red. It's the lowest self. 
the animal survival instincts, the ego, right? This is the lotus sigil. You want to tap into the root base chakra or the devil? You go to sigil for it. You ain't got to do no goddamn pentagram with no damn chalk and all that stupid satanic shit. You just look at the goddamn sigil and go straight to the devil himself, your motherfucking lower self. That's why it's the color red. Saturn was known as the black planet, but on Saturn, there's a cube or six pointed or six figured symbol, which is known as the red storm is the color red. And is there in which that is hundreds of times larger than our planet earth allegedly but that cube symbolizes um that area on saturn symbolizes the same cube shapes in which that we have of the jews in which that worships on saturday or saturn's day from friday 6 p.m in the afternoon or evening rather till 6 p.m evening to saturday that 24 hour region or 24 hour time span is the time for fasting during the week of those who practice the sabbath that's jewish people jews black jews in particular the hebrews hebrew israelites african israelites or african hebrews whatever the name that you want to use it is on saturday saturn's day that they fast. Of course, Saturn's day or Saturday symbolizes the structuring of your DNA, your blood, and your skeleton system, your bone system. Hence, you fast in order to keep from being so physical. But this cube is shown all over the world. Hell, it's even the Kaaba. Ka. Bah, which happens to be Adam and Eve that was produced on Canoom's potter's will, in which that you read in the Old Testament, God created man on the potter's will. This is even mentioned in the Holy Quran. So here it is, the Kaaba, symbolic also to the Adam and, Eve, Adam and Eve, which is actually nothing more than your soul and spirit. All right, your soul and spirit. Ka is supposed to be your spirit. Ba is supposed to be your soul. Some re reverse it. It doesn't matter. What it's talking about is how you have two bodies in which that animates life within melanated people. Hence the blackness, which is talking about your melanin. And then, of course, around this Kaaba in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, Muslims run around it seven times, symbolic to the rotation of the seven chakras. Each chakra rotates seven times. And then on the last rotation, you go to the corner and you kiss the black stone, symbolic to the Kundalini, kissing and sexing the pineal gland. All set, finding her man and kissing and sex in her man also and from that kiss of our set the kundalini and our saw the soul embedded inside of the pineal gland produces hair rule the sun that golden disc of light around the head oh shit now this is the realness of it so this is the truth about the Kaaba, one of the five pillars of faith is for muslim to make their hajj to mecca the tradition is Mecca is to walk around the Kaaba, this black cubic stone, seven times clockwise or counterclockwise, I should say, and then kiss it. The truth is the Kaaba represents the pineal gland and the walk around the Kaaba signifies the inner journey hajj that we all must make to enlighten through our seven chakras. Hence, the Kaaba is 43 feet high, four plus three is seven. Therefore, most Muslims are doing something external in which that should be done internally. This is why you do Salat. 
which means to raise fire because the lot seven position symbolizes the activation of each of the seven chakras. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. Allah, you act ball. Revelations verse 16, and in his right hand, he held seven stars. And then coming out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like a sun shining in all his brilliance. And the mysteries of the seven stars is that you saw in the right hands in the seven golden lamps is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lamps stands are the seven churches. See, they just told you. They told you all the shit in the Bible was an allegory. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lamp stands are the seven churches. The seven chakras. Coincidence? Is that a coincidence that the word churches and chakras have the same continents? You know what constant continents are? And the word constant stems from the word continent, which means constant means that which remains the same. So here you have CH or CHS. Take out the vowels and churches. And now you have chakras, C H A R K S or A S, chakras. Right? So you have C H A K R A S, chakras. Take out the vowels. It's the same as C H or C H S in churches. The K make a K, K, K sound. That's what they told you in, in school, in grammar class, in grammar school. Well, elementary school, they told you that the sound that the K -A, that the CH makes is the ka sound. K. Told you that. So chakra is the same as churches. The 12 disciples of Jesus, which is mentioned in Matthew 10, 2, 4, Matthew, and Mark 3, 14, 19. It says, now all the 12 apostles of these, the first is Simon, who is called Peter, your penis, and Andrews, his brother, Drew, which is talking about the semen, Simon, penis, Peter, you get it? Drew, Andrew, his brother, you draw it out. The sexual act. This is why these were the two disciples that Jesus, which symbolizes the fish, which is the spermazoa which all good Christians have on the back of their car. It's the fish. Look at this in Greek. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip, and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the publican. James, the son of Alephius, and Lebius, surnamed Thaddeus. Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas, Icarius who also betrayed him. Oh, Revelations 12 chapter, upon her crown were 12 stars. Somebody to the 12 disciples, nothing more than the 12 pair of cranial nerves. As I already told you about the 12 pairs of cranial nerves in the start of this presentation. For those that been along with me the whole time, and some might not been here the whole time, but the 12 disciples are the 12 pair of cranial nerves. Coincidence? Nah. This shit was metaphysically encoded, man. It's metaphysical. It's all metaphysical. The woman and the dragon. The woman is the Kundalini. In her active form, she's the dragon. The great red dragon. Kundalini, because she's raising from the red chakra. She's raising up from the devil to become the God. She raising up from Lucifer to become the Christ. You get it? Revelation 12, one, a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. All right, so it went from seven stars. Revelation, the first chapter, the 16th verse, from seven stars to becoming 12 stars. So that means that you will move from a seven 
chakra system to eventually a 12 chakra system. You have more glands that are growing in your body right now because this consciousness is raising up and resurrecting you and the DNA is being activated and more glands are growing within you in which that will eventually give you 12 stars or chakras. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon. That's Kundalini with seven heads. That's your chakras. Remember, we just showed you that. And the seven stars are the seven angels and the seven churches and the seven lamp um, stands of the seven churches. And of course, the seven is nothing more than the seven heads. And the ten horns are nothing more than the ten spheres on a tree of life. And the seven crowns on his head. And its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that it might devour the child the moment he was born. She gave birth to her son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. This is the science of the Black Madonna and child that you see in over 200 countries, paintings, statues, murals, in over 200 countries around the world. Worship the Black Madonna and Child, nothing more than the Kundalini, all right, and Christ. Remember, we told you what the Christ was at all you. So when the Kundalini comes up, monthly, as you're supposed to be doing the work, to raise it monthly, to bring that up, the chrism, the Christ, that oil, you bring it up, you bring it up, back into the upper room where Jesus now can breathe upon his disciples, the 12 pair cranial nerves and activate them in order that the light so that Jesus become the light of the world. That's what you must do, right? So Jesus can become the light of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you don't still understand, well, go to Freemasonry because the Scottish Rites have 33 degrees. The Sovereign Grand Inspector General, 33 degrees. From the first degree, the Entered Apprentice. It is situated and correlates to the 33 vertebrates in the spine. The seven um, cervical, um, cervical, um, cervical vertebrates, the, thre- um, the 12 um, zoracic, um, the ras- um, rascus, um, vertebrates, the five lumbar vertebrates, the five sacral and four on um, um, f- um vertebrates fuse all of that comes to um 32 slash one more which is the tailbone there which is um um 33. so 33 vertebrates in the spine jesus died at the age of 33. is it a coincidence that from the book of genesis adam to david is 33 which is the book of kings and then from the book of Kings to from David to Jesus, Matthews is 33 generations. So it's 33 generations from Adam to David, 33 generations from David to Jesus. Coincidence that the Bible has 66 books in the King James Version. Coincidence that you have 33 vertebrates and then 31 plus two nerves, which is 33. 33 and 33 is 66. So the real book of life is your body. And this is what Freemasonry is based on. 33 degrees. So when you keep talking about that, Freemasonry is satanic and and it's all of this um, dumb shit. It represents the 33 degrees of your spinal column, the 33 um, three vertebrates. Is your 33 vertebrates evil? 
Stop with the dumb shit. Above the three. Enter apprentice, fellow craftsman, master mason, levels of the first three degrees of Freemasonry. You have seven from the Mark Mason, past master, um, excuse me, Mark, Mas Mark Master, past master, most excellent master, royal arch mason, um, order of the Red Cross, order of the Knights of Malta, and the order of the Knights Templars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. On the York rights. Coincidence? I think not. Because those seven symbolizes the seven chakras. So masonry is based on your physical body, your anatomy. The seven chakras is nothing more than your endocrine glands. Stop with the dumb shit. All that damn spooky shit. I'm giving you real science here. Your pineal gland, pituitary gland, your thyroid, parathyroid gland, your thymus gland, your adrenal glands, your pancreas, the ovaries and testes. Right? These are the seven endocrine glands in the lung. And what happens is that along the spinal cord, as you see, the nerve stretches out to all of the organs and endocrine glands in the body, as you see here, through the 33 vertebrates and the brain all right so in hebrew you have the nahasin or nahashten which was sacred object made by moses it was made out of bronze in the form of a serpent and the lord said unto moses make thee a fiery serpent a seraph as in the seraphim and set it upon a pole and it shall come to pass that everyone that is Bitten when he's looked upon, upon it shall live. Numbers 21 8. What is that talking about? In Hebrew, seraphim is a combination of rafa or rafa, meaning healer, doctor, or surgeon. And sar, which is as in osar, means higher being or guardian angel, king, prince. And sar prefix also connects them to serpent, especially the serpent of healing. All right, which is the same as the Caduceus or Uraeus symbol that you see on the hospitals throughout this country, throughout the world. So Neheshten and the two serpents intertwined around the rod of the Caduceus is thought to originate with this class of angels. B before the angels, it already originated from out of ancient Egypt, as we know. So one of the names of this old serpent is Leviathan, the crooked serpent. The word Leviathan is probably Levant or Levitan. Levi, a band, and Tan, a serpent or dragon. But the tribe Levi or Levi answers, all right, to the third month. I won't get into that science, but right here, the spirit travels up the straight and narrow path, so it's no longer crooked. See, most of you are crooked Negroes because you haven't raised Kuntalini. No, some crooked ass Negroes, right? But you must make that Kuntalini straight. How you do that? You arch your back so that there's no curvature in the spine as you do your meditation techniques. So hence, you have straightened the, uh, uh, the straight and narrow path, as they say, right? Um, within Arabic, they, they tell you of the Surat al the king, the straight and narrow path. And as it unlocks the seven seals, it liberates the soul from all things programmed. Hence, you now become the Neo or the new Negro or the new nigga, or the more. Serpents or snakes have always been a symbol of knowledge and wisdom. The same motif of a talking serpent or, or, or snake connects with the knowledge and wisdom is to be found in the book of Genesis and the story of the Garden of Eden, which we all know, which comes right off the walls of ancient Kemet. And here it is. The serpent is given that knowledge straight to the third eye, because remember, this is why the ancient Egyptians have the serpent at the crown. Coincidence? And this gives you the connection to where? The stars, which is what? The astral plane. Astral. You get it? The star plane. This is what they're showing you right here in this metronature, this hieroglyphics. So Saturn is Satan, as I told you earlier. Right? In ancient Egypt, if you read um, 
the book of coming forth by day and night, the Perhem um, Heru Sut, or the book of coming forth by day and night is also called the misnomer, the book of the dead by um, E.A. Wallace Budge. It speaks of Santa, S A T A, Santa. And Santa, all right, is the name or where the origin of the name Satan is derived from. And Santa is a snake, but it was at one time had legs, it was walking. In other words, this is talking about when the energy Kundalini was within you, walking, going up and down with no problem. You didn't have all of these ethereal threads in which that you have to burn through to raise Kundalini or this densation or this condensation. You didn't have all of that before. He was more free hearted. So the Kundalini was able to go up and down as it needs to. All right. And stay up if it had to or when it needed to. Because it had legs. But remember that old serpent tricked Eve. Made her eat of the apple or of the fruit in the tree of the Garden of Eden. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. So now by eating the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, she may know that she is God. Adam ate of the fruit that she gave him, and he too shall know he's God. But what happened? They both got ashamed, for they knew that they was naked. In other words, it's talking about sex. The serpent, Kundalini, sexual energy. This is what it's talking about. And so God had to go down. So hence the consciousness had to go down to find out what the hell the mind of Adam and Eve, which is talking about the left and right hemisphere of the brain, what is wrong with them thinking in their lower self? But we know what the lower self cause. The lower self cause all things that harms. Right? That's in the 101s and the 102s of the Morris Holy Quran. Uh, excuse me, of the, um, of the Morris um, Science Temple of America within the um, questionnaires. So here, Saturn is a very cold and dry being that is six planet um, from the sun. As we told you earlier, Saturn represents the winter um, season death, who rules over the zodiac signs of Capricorn, which is the polar opposite of Leo, summer, who rules, ruling planet is the sun. In the celestial um, cycle, Saturn is opposite um, opposition with the sun, which is why it is such a bad rep has such a bad reputation, right? All right, and remember, Adam was the son of God. So hence, Satan or Satan or the serpent in the Garden of Eden was opposite or in opposition to Adam. All right, in the Greek mythologies, Saturn plays the allegorical figure of this old fearful man named Kronos, who is also known as the father time. All right, actually, that is Heru the Elder. Heru the Elder is known as Kronos, where the name Kronos comes from, which means chronology, the sun traveling through time. This is where we get the name Holy Quran from. Quran comes from Kronos or chronology. All right. Hence, remember, the 25,000 year renewal of history is the Kronos. Time. All right. A.K.A. Grim Reaper. One of the attributes of the Saturn's rings is that they slow down the movement of the movement of the atoms, which is what concentrate energy into form. So remember, your auric field slows down the movement of the atoms in which that concentrated the energy into form. Hence is how you became human. Whereas the sun accelerates the movement of atoms. Hence the reason why you're supposed to get a lot of sun, that vitamin D. So anything that gets trapped in Saturn's orbit is hindrance by time and space, i.e. the Lord of the Rings. Remember when they put on the rings? Oh, they went bat shit. Oh, they went ape, cra ape shit crazy. Remember that? Ape shit crazy. Um, new school. Ape shit. Right? Hence, there are 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, and 24 hours in a day, which is Two plus four, which is six, hence six, six, six. All right? So 
you go to the Old Testament and you read Genesis 3, 1 through 15, and he, serpent, said unto the woman, ye have God said, ye shall eat, shall not eat of every tree in the garden. And the serpent said unto the woman, yea, shall not surely, for yea, shall not surely die. For God does know of that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above all beasts, every beast of the field and upon thy belly shall thy go. And dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. So hence the lakes was cut asunder from Satan. But if you go to the book of the dead, the papyrus of Annie by E.A. Wallace Budge in chapter of the making of the transformation into the serpent Satan, man could become immortal like Sata by repeating prayers to identify himself with the nature, God, the great serpent Sata, son of the earth, just like Jesus is called the son of man, was immortal because he was regenerated every day in the womb of the sky nature, God is newt. Just like Sata, Jesus was called the son of man. We um, New um, Testament, John 3, 14, and it says, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. Hence, the kundalini must be lifted back up. You must put legs back upon the kundalini and lift it up. You can't keep letting it slither on his belly and eat the dust of the ground all the days of your life. You must lift it up. Ha. You must raise Kutalini. <laughs> All right. You must raise it. Hallelujah. 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 All right. So. Kutalini. Must raise up. You must reunify. 360, 360 of the circle, 360 of the square. At 720, you must reach that level once again. All right? The circle is called an arc. All right? And then, of course, from the circle is the arc. From the square is an angle. Hence, you have the term arc angle or archangel you get it so this is what is meant in freemasonry that you must um square um you must um square your circle you must stand on the square in all this type of talk all right so 180 degrees of positive and 180 degrees of negative that's the struggle that you normally go through between the higher self and the lower self the cycle of nature of angelic beings 180 degrees of submissiveness and then 180 degree nature of the jinn, which is of rebelliousness. right? Hence, that is the nature that you have, which is 360 nature of positive and negative balanced by will. But even then you must take it one step higher to 720, all right? That's what you must do. And by doing so, you become the L, all right? Arc Ang L, Arc Ang L. All right, L, ill, electric, elite, elite, all right, Elohim. So here you have Samatawi, the union of the two lands between Heru and Set. This is the 180 degrees positive, 180 degrees negative. Heru, positive, Set, negative. At least this is the way in which that you've been taught. Symbolized as the lower self and the higher self. Heru symbolized the higher self. Set symbolizes the lower self. But as you see here, they are tying. All right, they are tying the loop. But well, let's look and find out what's really going on. In the 102 keys, in number 66, what is the devil sometimes called? The lower self. 67, how many selves are there? Two. 68, name them. Higher self and lower self. 69, what people represents the higher self? The angels who protect the holy city of Mecca. Where's Mecca? The third ventricle in the brain. What people represents the lower self? 
those who was cast out of the holy city and those who accepted their teachings. 71, what is the higher self? The higher self is the mother of virtues and the harmonies of right, breathe justice, mercy, love, and right. 72, can the higher self pass away? No. 73, why? Because it is our law in man. 74, what did the lower self breathe? Hatred, slander, lootness, murder, theft, and everything that harms. 75, what did the higher self say to the lower self at one time when he met him? Where are you going, Satan? 76, what was the answer that the lower self gave to the higher self? I'm going to and fro the earth, seeking whom I may devour. 77, has he finished his task of devouring? Yes. 78, when was the time declared out? When he nailed Jesus on the cross. All right? He gave you the science of that. All right? You can also look at that in the 101s. But here, the false prophet is mentioned three times in the Bible of Revel in the Bible or in the book of Revelation. Revelation 16, 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Revelation 19, 20. And the beast was taken and with him false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them. Um, he received the mark of the beast and them that worship his image. All right. These both was cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Revelation 20:10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. The ego is the false self, the false prophet, creates out of fear, no matter how much it wants to be real, like the true creator and source, so to speak. Never will be. It is only a reflection of the truth. When people tell each other to wake up, they mean that we need to realize this ego is not real, and that we are really just one, the original source in which is nothing and all possibilities. Stop rejecting your ego as an enemy of being that which to that wants to rule, right? Stop rejecting your ego as it's an enemy. Or, or as an enemy, or being that wants to, or being that wants to rule, or something outside of yourself. Your ego is the way the creator gave itself the ability to focus itself as separate consciousness to experience things, but it is not real in the sense that there is only the void, which again is nothing or possibility. And how do we know there's the void? Because scientists tell you that they don't know nothing. Outside of the visible spectrum, the only thing they know is that it is known as dark matter or black energy. And it makes up more than 95% of the universe. The word within the yogi traditions or Vedic Hindu script tells us of Saraswati. The word Saraswati means nothingness. Within the Orient in China, when you practice Qigong Tai Chi, you go into a position called Wu Chi, which means emptiness. In Islam, the name Allah means the nothingness. In Buddhism, they have the name Nirvana, which correlates to nothingness. The Holy Quran, circle seven chapters, seven holy instructions from the prophet, know thyself, it says know thyself, and the pride of his creation, the line uniting divinity and matter. Look at Heru and Set with the line uniting divinity, which is Heru, and matter, which is Set, Soot, Satan, Saturn, your body. Remember, Satan in Hebrew means thing of clay. Behold, a part of Allah himself within thee. Remember thy own dignity, nor the sin, nor did the sin to evil or to meanness. So when you're talking about um, this unification, Sematawi or Sematur, um, Islamism, everlasting gospel, more science, all of that is talking about the same thing. It's a unification of lower self and higher self, right? Right? Um, in the more Holy Quran Circle 7, it tells you about um, the friendship of, Je of um, Jesus and Lamas. And Jesus explains to Lamas the meaning of truth. This is in chapter seven. 
And you go to 10, verse 10, the Holy breath is truth. That it, which is, that which was, and that which is, and evermore shall be. It cannot change nor pass away. 11, Lamas said, you answer well, now what is man? And Jesus said, man is the truth. Falsehood strangely mixed. So man is truth and falsehood strangely mixed. So man is soul and ego strangely mixed. Man is Heru and Set strangely mixed. Man is 180 positive and 180 negative strangely mixed. For man is the breath made flesh. So the truth and falsehood are conjoined in him and they strive and not goes down as man as truth abides. This goes back to John stating that the word was made flesh. You thought that was just Jesus. But man is the breath made flesh. Ha. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Genesis, the second chapter, the seventh verse. Ha. Hey, yeah. West, the ninth edition, defines air as breath or the gases mixture surrounding the earth. A gas is a loose assortment of various terms of atoms. An atom, in turn, is extremely tiny ball of energy. All right. Fridjof on Capra, in his Tao of Physics, observes atoms consist of particles, and these particles are not made of any material stuff. The the discovery that mass is nothing but a form of energy has forced us to modify our concept of a particle in an essential way. In modern Symbolizes spiritual energy, magnetic energy symbolizes material energy. Both for energy. That's the line, is the energy. All right? But in order to live in the physical world, you must do so with observation. And upon observation, whether it's with your two physical eyes or third eye, you create a world. You get it? <laughs> Any energy then is the root of air all right is the root of air all right so i'm um, hold on i don't know if y'all seeing the screen any longer let me go out right quick okay i don't know what just happened I, my wife ain't here tonight, so I know I ain't hitting up the um, you know, I'm not hitting up the um the joints as far as the questions and answering. So I won't be able to get to that tonight, but still give it out, you know what I mean? You know, we still would love to um and also um do some Snapchat, some um, super chats, whatever they call that, you know, um help out because I know y'all getting some good information tonight, you know what I'm saying? Be answering, you know, be, be telling you the secrets of the universe up in here. So energy then is the root of air. And in ancient world, energy and spirit were synonymous. Breath and energy is synonymous. Breath and spirit is synonymous. Both spirit and matter is incorporeal and corporal. And two manifestations of the same one reality. Theologians call this one reality God. Philosophers call it that. Scientists call it energy. Energy is external. 
According, okay, according to the law of conservation of energy, which states that energy is neither created nor destroyed, but constantly transforms. But whether we call it God, that, or energy, this one essence is the same, and from it sprung both matter and spirit. All right, Madame Bavasky, matriarch of the Theosophical Society, noted that basically spirit and matter are Parusha and um, Prakriti are but two prime. Um, primitive, or uh, excuse me, prime, primal aspects of the one and the second list. The two are different forms of the same basic stuff in which the same way that ice and steam are two different forms of water. This reality, this one reality has been found in every major religion, world religion from the beginning from whence all else sprungs or springs. This is what we were telling you earlier. The Hindu called it Pra Abram, a problem. The Zoroastrians called it the Rwanda, a Zuanda, um, Kurni. And the Egyptians, it was Kenif, all right? Or Neth within Arabic, or Nefish within Hebrew, also called Ain or Ain Sof. John had the Christians' world scripturally proved that God is, in fact, a formless spirit, not a man. All right, and through, we concur 100% with John 4, 24, for God is a spirit. We believe Christ, um, Christian world has greatly misunderstood and misinterpreted this most revealing scripture. The proper interpretation of this verse depends on our understanding that it is original context. The literal translation of both the Greek, Numa, and Hebrew, or Hebrew, Ruach, words has rendered spirit is breath or air. This breath or air is motion, is according to the ancients, the intricate life force which animates all things. It is prana in the Hindu and ba of the ancient Egyptians. And Wade Nobles in his ancient um, psychology described the ba as the ba was the second of the seven divisions of the psychic nature. It represents the transmission of the breath of life, right? The breath of life, the holy breath is the ba, the spirit. Or uh, better yet, here, the soul, all right? The spiritual soul. The ancient believed that this was one power, which was symbolically ref, uh, represented as the breath, and that this power or breath was transmitted from the ancestors to the descendants. The ancients believed that this power or energy had always existed and, all, and will always exist. This ba was the invisible source like electricity of all visible functions. The Ba was in effect the visible principle which represented the essence of all things. All right, so here you have the dual aspect of the soul, the harmonic, the harmonious, the harmonic aspect and the fiery aspect, which together is the union of Heru. So when, um, which is Heru set. This is where you get on Star Wars that Yoda set on the neck or the head area of Luke Skywalker. Luke the Skywalker is Lucifer, the light bringer, right? This is why he wore white, right? And then Yoda is um, Jehuti or Yoda is Tahuti, right? The wisdom, Tahuti, symbolic here by set, right? This is the unification of them too. This is often shown. So here we have it, an ancient, um, and according to Egyptian Yoga, Volume 1, by Dr. Muata Ashby, it says, set joins forces to tie up the symbol of the union, Sema. This symbol refers to the union of upper and lower Egypt under one ruler, but only at one more subtle level. It refers to the union of the one's higher self and lower self, Heru and Set, as well as the control of one's breath, life through the union, control, all right, so the union, the line is the breath, control of the lungs, breathing organs. The same is with the image of God, with the two faces and a man and a woman turned in opposite directions, all right, or here is set in Heru. Or when you watch on, um, on Star Wars, Yoda and Luke Skywalker, this is God is spirit, man, and matter, woman. All right, symbolically. This is why you have Yoda, you turn the five-pointed um, star 
um, in an upright position, um, pentagram in an upright position and cover it the top point, you will see in a bottom part where the um, horns are located, you will actually see Yoda's face in the symbol, right? So you would turn the five-pointed star or inverted five-pointed star upward, upright, right? Because the inverted star is nothing more than feminine energy, downward energy, the ascending energy. Um, the um, ascending star or the upright star is nothing more than ascending energy. That's all it is, right? So we got to get out that spooky shit. So Yoda trained Luke Skywalker to fight against evil. Jews viewed their manifest destiny as a battle against evil. The name Yoda can also reflect Yahuda, which is Judah. First mentioned in Genesis 29, 35, where the etymology is provided as meaning giving thanks and gratitude. When Leah, the wife of Jacob, gave birth to Yahuda, um, Judah, she said, now I will give thanks to God, her son Judah, is the basis of the term Judea, Judaism, and Jewishness, all right? Yoda may, however, simply be a transformation of the Hebrew term Yodia, literally knowing. That's what um, Yodia means. Literally, it means knowing. So that is Jahuti, all right? Jahuti. And where is that located at? Oh, it's located right there in the brain area at the medulla amigata. Madu as in medu nature, the word of God. You think that's coincidence that I'm um, in Latin, madu, Allah, madu Allah, or medu ra, medu ra, the word of ra. Oh shit, I think we just came up on something here. So you have the yamin and the feng um, shi. The feng shi area is where you would tap at to scarify the medulla omlegata to give you access to the Akashic records, your oversoul where your past lives are stored at. In other words, to your last incarnations. As well, it was also give you photographic memory if you tap at that area with the, the thing, as you see here, the thing she. Okay, right above the Yamin. Because it's known as the mouth of God. That's what it's known as. That area is known as the mouth of God. And the symbol for that is the symbol Gulf within Hebrew, Q-O-P-H, Gulf, which means back of the head. It also means monkey. What was the symbol of Tahuti? Tahuti symbol was a monkey or a baboon. Hence, monkey see, monkey do. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Because it also means copy. So monkey copies. So that is the copying center for your memories is the medulla omnigata. That's where your past lives are stored at. All right? So um, I'm going to end that here for the night. You know, shit. I think we done went over some good information. Y'all done got a whole lot, a whole lot. All right. So um, I'm going to say peace. Make sure y'all um keep supporting the God. You know, um, we gonna keep getting this information out here. I mean, ain't playing as you see. You know, we real with this. All right. Hope y'all appreciate this shit. If y'all do, give some good ass comments on the video. All right. Damn, like this shit. You know what I'm saying? Share this shit. Pass it on. What y'all hogging this shit for? You know what I'm saying? Hell, tell your friends and family members to watch this shit. Get it out. Shit, I want to see this shit go viral, just like all this other dumb shit y'all be sending to me on Facebook and everywhere um, with this shit that going viral and shit. You know what I'm saying? And no, I ain't doing no goddamn video about no damn triple X um, station or whatever that motherfucking name is. You ain't getting that shit here. Go to them other... Um, weird ass um, channels about this dude. You know what I'm saying? What we do here is get down. We get down with the funky shit, with the funky metaphysics, the funky occult, with the funky esoteric. We get down. Peace.